yeah, as you can see behind us, it's our Martin Garland place and show you how we did it. This is um, the penetration hole in the top of the beam where the martingale strap is going to go through. Um, so lots and lots of measuring and um, drawing and CAD modeling, trying to get this slot in the correct position so I know where the penetration is, how big the slot should be and the approximate angle of a good angle so that when I cut it my slot is not crazy oversized. Uh, so Martin Gale's going in for the last time. All the holes and slots have been cut. Um, we've got the top of the top of the spreader all finished being cut out. Um, yeah, so I gotta be final dry fit, make sure it all fits and then glue it all together. So the strap goes through this hole and then comes out another hole under the beam and then it's about this far away from touching the side of the boat and then I'll uh, put a big foam wedge there and extend the um, Carby Uni bands into the hull. Ah, so now a straight edge to make sure that your martingale's straight. Yep. We don't want any sag this way or and then just some spar bond. Some spar bond. So what's the difference between spar bond and the epoxy bogs that you make up? Spar bond is a uh, rubber toughened epoxy. It's essentially you try and use um, spar bond or rubber toughened epoxy for secondary bonding everything but it's pretty expensive and it's not always available so. should, should we just explain in Valencia at the moment this is the fires <laughs> and because um, we're still in lockdown there's no official fires <laughs> no official fires there's no um, mascaleta or fireworks or anything like that so the kids have got their own little fireworks and are setting them off behind us <laughs> So, um, mixing up some Sparbond 345, um, this is the rubber toughened epoxy and you can see um, when I poke it, it's very sticky, gooey and rubbery. Um, it's got a 2 to 1 mix ratio, so I've got two of the resin, two of the hardener. I'll mix it together and you'll see when I mix it together just how difficult and rubbery it is to um, mix it together and it's wow. Well, hang on, if it's a two to one then it should be two of the yellow stuff and one of the purple? Uh, correct. Yeah. That's, that's what I said? Probably not. And you can see just how chewy and rubbery this stuff is and it is every bit as difficult to mix as you can see. See it actually acts like a bit like a rubber band. Um, when it's warmer it's a little bit easier to uh, deal with but because it's fast hardener don't want to get it too warm it's all mixed up and then up on the job uh, are you going to glue the paper on um it'll get sanded off in a minute so i gotta cut yeah i thought you were cutting all that out yeah. so why leave it on now um, just easier. It gets too thin. Uh, yeah, because you want to 
get that joint first and then you can shake yeah. it in. I actually only need this much here to make the connection to here so that it won't pull out but because I'm this close to the hull I may as well make it connect to the hull it's nice if it can connect to the hull because um, then I know that the the load is definitely being translated directly into the hull sidewall rather than having to go through the beam socket connection the, the, this beam connection here is so big that uh, it won't be an issue um, this is rookie rookie mistakes 101 ah, it's not really a rookie mistake <laughs> it's just a, um, a nuance <laughs> annoying ah uh, it's just a shame because we have just been rushing through it all and one of um, our engineering friends last night commented on one of our posts saying I hope you've put some pretension in before you laminated in the martingale yeah, drop asked, did we or did we yeah. and I was like no, no of course I didn't <laughs> no we have Sorry, we didn't and we should have. No, oh, we shouldn't. No. It's going to annoy we, you. We could have. It's, it's going to annoy. It's going to annoy him so much. <laughs> so what's the? Um, I want to explain though. I want to explain why. Why we should have done it, or why it would have been a good idea to do it. Because. Uh, are you going to answer that one? Are you? Maybe I should come. Uh, I'm going to come a bit closer. Yeah. So what Anna was talking about before with uh, the pre-tensioning, trying to pre-tension the, the martingale. When we um, set up big catamarans, uh, particularly ones with uh, removable martingales, because uh, this is a fixed one, it's slightly different, um, but with removable ones and with martingales that have small amounts of stretch, we pre-tension the whole arrangement by pulling down on the longeron or pulling down on the beam and pre-tensioning it the wrong way then we'll put the martingale in place pin it tension it so that it, this will be pre-tensioned um, and because this is a fixed arrangement and it's quite a substantial fixed arrangement um, I wasn't even thinking of pre-tensioning it because it's so solid. Um, I was thinking, oh shit, I'd need a lot of weight to pre-tension it and deflect the beam down enough to get me pre-tension to be noticeable in the martingale. But um, no, I, I, if you watch, because it only takes a very small amount of deflection in the beam to change the tension in here. I put my 100 kilos on it, you can see it just goes down but by the same token if I lift it up it just instantly goes from to tight and that's just with me lifting 30 40 kilos so um, I'm not worried as soon as the four stay pin is in and um, the slightest amount of rig tensions in there that thing's going to be bone tight what about when you were sailing? You're saying that when we are sailing, sometimes the martingale goes loose. It won't go loose. It will hum. So we're going to have some. We possibly may have some vibration because there's no pretension in it. Uh, no. So what you do with the by pretensioning it, it it puts a little bit more tension in here, which moves its natural frequency a little bit higher so its likeliness of humming is is less um, also he's saying that when we're at anchor that's when it's most likely going to be humming and annoying us um, because it, it'll be tighter than this but it'll be in an area that it might with a bit of 
wind um, wiggle and move around a little bit and hum but I can put a piece of elastic shock cord on it and that stops it because we have the same issue with all the race boats in our rigs all the rigging because it's all carbon rigging now and it's big long spans and they're relatively tight when the wind comes past they get a harmonic through them and the carbon rigging hums and it's insanely annoying <laughs> like drives you absolutely crazy watch this space yeah it could be getting so, mad yeah yeah managed to laminate the um, martingale to seagull striker yesterday it so, wasn't my best job but uh, we'll make it look half decent um, it's, a bit, it's a bit ambitious with how much laminate I was jamming on there and bagging it all in one hit bit puffy and bulgy but anyway that's what you get on the big jobs um, this come up, this has come up nicely though yeah, it's a bit wrinkly but uh, where's the wrinkles point to the wrinkles over here uh, it's wrinkles everywhere you can see it's not dead flat but it's because I was um, trying to do quite a lot laminate a lot of laminate in one big hit and um, it was reasonably wet as well so but the laminate was wet or the weather was wet laminate's wet so there's a lot of resin in there for the um, back bag to have to deal with will you look at it later and it's going to annoy you no it'll be fine by the time I finish it I've got to sand a little bit of a way a little bit of it away which I'm not a fan of but it is what it is. Um, well, I've got a laminate. Try and get laminate onto the where the martingale enters the beam on the top. Uh, try and do the extensions on the martingale strap to the hull. Um, tidy this up. Yeah, that's, that's my rough plan for today. Um, putting the cover laminates over the um, all the double bias stuff tidying shit up so that um, we don't tear fibers out like we showed in the previous movie of fixing the bottom I think it was about tearing the double bias strands out so I'm putting a woven cloth over it so that <coughs> if it gets nicked scratched touched banged or whatever it doesn't 
blow it all apart. Okay. So here we have a bit of lamination cooking off under vacuum. And Shane is trying to get some enthusiasm together to do the underneath. And this is what I've been working on. So just sanding all this back because we're raising up the uh, trampoline height. And you've done done good. Yeah, it started off laminating. It's lovely. It's back in the water. It's back in the water. And it's still not finished. 